I'm Jonathan from Curto's in Westchester County, Senor Smoke in full effect. And I want to welcome you to the sanctuary here. It is December 1st, 2016. And what better way to start the month off? We're going to try to knock out one video per day. And what way, what better way to start the holiday season off? We're talking about uh, something other than dishwashers. We are going to talk about probably my favorite product in the entire uh, repertoire, the entire portfolio of Curto's goodies, and um, that's the Memphis wood-fired grill. Yes, sir. Um, fresh on the heels of making my 18-hour Central Texas brisket, which uh, we did in September, and came out uh, pretty much thumbs up for uh, my first stab at it. Because we know that brisket can be, uh, it's the apex of barbecue, but it can be quite, quite unforgiving um, if you take a wrong turn with it. And we'll turn it to basically shoe leather. Um, what I did was um, I took a, instead of doing a full packer brisket, which could be anywhere from 13 to 18 pounds, I dialed it down a little bit and I got, I think it's called the first cut brisket, butcher's cut brisket. And this was about, uh, oh boy, I think it was about seven to eight pounds if I'm not mistaken. And uh, while it lacked um, the fat cap that the larger brisket's going to have, I compensated for that with a little technique that, of course, my... Uh, my mentor of sorts, Steve Reichlin, had recommended doing uh, where you actually, um, with a lack of a fat cap, you'll drape some bacon uh, across the top to increase the, uh, uh, the lubrication, so to speak. And I also put a, a pan of uh, one of my favorite beers uh, in there as well to kind of uh, create a moist uh, environment while the brisket was uh, smoking away. Um, so the setup on the Memphis was um, I cooked it for, instead of doing the 18 hour haul this time, this was much shorter. This was came to about seven hours and um, I, I hit the brisket again. I'm trying to just really, um, with beef, really good beef, it's real simple. It's the beef, it's the salt, and it's the pepper, and then we're done. I might have actually put a little bit of this like uh, Jake's Grill and Coffee Rub on there as well, but you know, I didn't inject it, I didn't, you know, you know, do any nonsense the day before, particularly with the injecting. I mean, I just wanted this to be beef, smoke, fire, done. Um, and uh, and that's what we did. And uh, they was put on, I had the deflector plate on, of course, and we set the temperature. Um, I believe this one was cooked at 275. So I'm not, I mean, I, I guess that could technically be called slow and slow. But, uh, you know, some of my friends have said, oh, no, no, to, you know, truly be it slow and low, you got to be, you know, 225, maybe tops 250. I did it at 275. We had stuff to do that day, and I didn't want the thing on for all that long. Once again, the Memphis held its temperature beautifully throughout the cook. Um, brisket shrunk down somewhat significantly, as was expected. Um, it was cooked in a pan this time, as opposed to the last time when I actually had it directly on the grates. And um, we took it off. I wrapped it for about an hour, tempted, it might have been a little bit more than hours to get, you know, have the meat relax, become more tender, and then uh, took it off and cut it, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, um, the results were extraordinary. Um, you can see by the pictures a very, very, very pronounced smoke ring. The smoke ring, of course, being a sign that you did something right, and uh, you could see the juice literally pouring out of the beef as we cut into it. Um, this was definitely, definitely juicier than when I did the full brisket at the end of the summer. Um, the uh, comments that I got by the peanut gallery who tried it, um, they were, and, and they're not like avid carnivores, um, but they thought it was absolutely phenomenal and definitely a step up from, again, the bigger brisket that was done at the end of the summer. So the takeaways from this, um, I know there are, uh, there are folks out there who believe that truly, to really smoke the right way, um, you know, you got to be in a ceramic vessel, it's going to hold the moisture and the heat better, so on and so forth, and that the pellet grills really can't hold their own against whether it's the Kamado Joe or the Egg or Primo. And, you know, I think that's nonsense. I think the, the Memphis Grill um, can certainly hold its own against um, any other smoking vessel that's out there. I mean, I've never used a stick burner, so I'm not going to throw that in, but I also don't, I don't have all that time, hours upon hours upon hours, to basically sit there, drink bourbon, and watch it. Um, uh, the, the fact that the Memphis Grill allows you this ability to just set things up plug in your temperature, use your meat probe, and then you set it and forget it, as, um, as, as we like to say. 
there's something to be said for that. Now, for some people, I understand that that's not going to resonate because they want to be hands-on. They want this to be more primal in the approach and maybe using a, it's almost like an oven, um, can be cheating of sorts. But you know what? I don't buy into it. Um, I am, every time I use that grill, um, and quite honestly, to call the Memphis grill a grill is almost a disservice because it does so much more than grill. Um, I, I'm literally speechless by the way the thing performs. And there is such a, um, the way, everything from the construction of it, the way it, it is built so solidly. And I have a lot of these high-end appliance brands that we deal with over here who have set very high standards for their quality assurance and construction and robustness. The Memphis Grill is right there with it, if not better. Absolutely phenomenal. And oh yeah, by the way, it's gorgeous to look at, okay? It looks like a DeLorean. And, um, uh, and also it works. So that's, it, it's just literally, it's, one of, it's just it's an amazing, amazing uh, product that I'm truly, truly passionate about. And it kicks ass when it comes to brisket. Yeah. Please remember, please remember that we ship Memphis Grills nationwide. So whether you live on the West Coast, down South, or the New York metropolitan area, we can serve your needs. No doubt about that. Uh, free shipping, that's one of the things that we will offer and uh, definitely talk to us. But this is something that, this is a purchase that we call this a considered purchase. Um, for folks out there who have had Memphis's before and maybe looking to get a new one, you already know what the deal is. But for the folks who have never experienced this, and I understand that they're not, you know, you can't just roll down the street to your hardware store, what have you, and find one of these. I mean, you've probably seen them on Project Smoke, you've read about them on barbecue blogs and such. You've seen my videos. Um, you need, to, uh, you need to touch and feel this thing if possible, but certainly if you can't, you gotta talk to somebody like me because I'm not just some dude who has it on the sales floor. I'm looking to make a killing on it. I own it, I use it, I knock the hell out of it, and um, I could share my experiences with you. And if you wanna buy one, we'll help you out and you'll definitely save money. So thank you for your time, appreciate it. Happy holiday season to all. And if a Memphis Grill is uh, on your wish list for Santa, give us a call. Jonathan at Curtos.com. Peace.